If you're thinking about trading stocks or building a trading bot, you probably know that you need lots of data to be successful, specifically historical data so you can backtest or simulate how your trading strategy or bot would have performed in the past. Unfortunately though, getting this historical pricing can be tricky. See a lot of these free sites will give you the adjusted price which does not account for splits, dividends, and other company actions. See here, the claimed historical price of Apple is about $77, but when we look at the unadjusted price, we can see that it's actually about $300 in January 2020 because there was a huge split in August of 2020 that the adjusted price takes into account for that the unadjusted price doesn't. So if you really want to simulate the past, you need to use the unadjusted prices, which can be tricky to find. See, even Yahoo Finance can be a little bit misleading because you see that they have historical prices close and adjusted close. So you think, great, close is the unadjusted price, right? Well, why is this not close to $300 like we saw in the unadjusted price? Well, when we read the fine print, we see that close price still accounts for splits. An adjusted close price accounts for both dividends and splits, making the close price completely inaccurate for what the raw price was in the past. To get actually accurate historical unadjusted price, we typically want to look into a more premium service designed for giving users this type of correct data about the past and not rely on these sketchy free sites that could stop working at any time. Now you may be saying, well, I can't afford to use a premium service. Well, I've got some good news. There are a lot of newer APIs in the market now that offer freemium offerings. So they'll give you things like two years of historical data for absolutely free, and you can only pay if you need a little bit more than that, and it's really easy to get started. So let's look for a stock price API, and we're gonna skip all the paid results and articles, and the first organic result is this here, polygon.io. And look, they have a free option, and you can get an API key for free. The only major restraint seems to be you can only do five API calls per minute or one every 12 seconds on the free plan and you're limited to only two years of historical data, which should be enough for building a simple bot and you're limited to personal use. They also have a free cryptocurrency offering which we can look at in another video. Just let me know in the comments. So it's easy to sign up. You simply need an email address, no credit card or anything, and you can see your account here and they give you an API key, which is all you need. And you can monitor your API usage here. And once you have that key, you can check out their API documentation here and use any of the available endpoints in the free plan up to one request every 12 seconds as much as you'd like. So you can see it's pretty simple. They're just get calls to this URL and you put your API key in a get parameter. And you can see they have some basic reference API endpoints like to get tickers for a search term if you don't know the ticker. You can also look it up by QSIP, which is interesting. And they let you see company details, like they even give you a logo, company headquarters, when it was listed and some other interesting details you may want to know about companies. You can also see news about a company, which is really awesome. You just put in a ticker and the API will give you back hundreds of articles where the company was mentioned in the news. So I know this can be very useful for trading bots and doing natural language processing on news articles. And you can also see stock splits for a company so we can account for splits and dividends and automatically calculate that into our own trading algorithm instead of relying on the adjusted price. And here we can see the dividends. And these are other things like the stock financials we may want to use, like cash on hands and a lot of other corporate finance that I don't know too much about. But you can incorporate this into your historical trading. And to get the actual historical prices, there are two main endpoints to do this. We can give it a simple ticker and a date, and we'll get back some information about the price, like the high, low, after hours, close, pre-market, etc. And there's also a way to get historical data or a range of dates. This is useful for building a bar chart, but it doesn't give you as much rich detail. And you can see the data here in which you get back. And one thing I don't like is they give you back the date as an epoch timestamp, which can be a little bit tricky to consume and change to a normal date. And you can see here that you can set it if you want the unadjusted price, like we talked about, that we probably want for backtesting or not. So Polygon looks really promising. The API has exactly what we need. We can get historical unadjusted prices as well as information about splits and dividends we can use in our backtesting. The only issue now is, well, how do we get data out of this API into something more usable, like say CSV files we can put into a database or look at with other tools such as Python and Pandas or Process in Excel. 
So you typically need to write custom code to consume this API and convert all that data into CSV files, which are better for analysis. However, in this video, I'm going to show you the Steve C data platform, which solves this exact problem. Disclaimer, it's a paid platform and I happen to own it. So if you don't want to spend any money and are comfortable coding, you're probably welcome to just skip to the conclusion where I won't go over much. Otherwise, please enjoy the quick demonstration I'm going to show you on how to use the Steve C data platform to get CSV data out of Polygon's financial API. So if you sign up with a link in the description, you'll get access to this Polygon integration on CFC data, which lets you get bulk data out of this stock market API. So we can get CSV exports out of all the endpoints we just talked about. We'll do a quick demo here. Just put in your API key and a query, and you can see you can download the results for your ticker. And you can also just put in a blank query to get all of the known tickers in their database. You can download as a CSV and open up an Excel and do whatever analysis you'd like. And this works for any of these endpoints here. So like I mentioned, if we want to get the historical stock split so we can run an accurate back test, we can run this endpoint here, show everything and download this as a CSV file as well. And admittedly, there are not too many data points here to worry about, but this can get useful for dividends, which typically have more data points. So here I just put in my ticker and my API key and I'll get dividends back. And I can see that there's quite a lot of them. Usually I do it once per quarter or so. And I can download all this raw data in a CSV file that I can feed to my backtesting algorithm or quickly import into my own MySQL or Postgres database to use my bot or trading algorithm with. And we can do the same thing with company news, which may be useful if you're trying to build a natural language processing based system that looks at news and tries to figure out the impact on stock price. So same thing, just put in the ticker and your API key and you'll get back a large collection of hundreds of news articles that mention Apple. And you can download this as a CSV file and like I mentioned, import into a database or maybe you're doing something in Excel or Python. And you can see in the description some raw text that the news article talks about. So you can also visit the links and you can also check out the date so you can simulate a back test and what your bot would do if it read the article back in time. And to get the historical prices, there are two main endpoints we can use. The historical chart prices, which accept a date range, and the historical open and close, which accept a ticker and a specific date. So let's start with the date range one because that sounds easier to use. We simply provide a from date. So let's give it the beginning of January of 2020. And then we give it a to date. We'll give it January 31st. And then we just put in a ticker. So we'll use Apple again, as well as our API key. And don't forget our favorite parameter, unadjusted, set that to true so we get the real prices from the past. And when we run this, the Steve C platform will parse the results into a CSV file we can easily download for that date range. And you'll see the closing price here is in the 300s with the accurate pricing. And I can click expanded CSV and get this in a CSV file I can check out in Excel. What I don't like about this endpoint is how it gives me the date back. So you can see it's in this column here and Excel sometimes has a funny problem with it based on your CSV import settings. And it's actually an epoch since 1970. So you can go to epochconverter.com and paste that value in and you'll get to see the human readable date, January 2nd, 2020. And then you can go to the next one and get the date out. Here we see it's sequential January 3rd. And I'll point out that we skipped January 1st because it's a holiday because everyone is too hungover to trade. So this endpoint excludes holidays, which is nice. And the other endpoint, which returns a little bit more data and gives us more control over the date, only allows us to put in one date at a time as well as a ticker. So let's try for January 31st. We'll put in Apple and our API key, unadjusted true for the real price. And we'll see we get the close here as well as the volume after hours and pre-market pricing. Now, what if we want to process a list for a date range? Well, we have this CFC data workflow formula here, which will let us put in a list of dates and it'll automatically make individual requests to the API on our behalf and then combine together all of the results into one CSV file. So the hard part here is generating a list of dates. So you can use this free tool I found. You put in the start date here, just in regular format, tell it you want to increase by days, tell it how many days you want, and then tell it the output format here, which is YY, YY, MMDD. And then you can copy this and paste it in here. This will unfortunately include weekends. I haven't found an easy way to do that. You'd have to write some custom code or maybe do it in Excel if you wanted to. So you can put in multiple tickers here if you'd like. 
and it will get each pair. So you can see on the right side, I'm gonna make more and more requests because I'm gonna look up every single pair of stock, ticker, and date. But for this demo, I'll just look up Apple like we did before. And as always, put in true for unadjusted so you get back the real historical price. And then this workflow will go and run on your behalf. And by default, it will run once every 12 seconds so you don't go over the rate limit on the free plan. You can change this setting if you have a premium plan with Polygon. And then here you can see all the work it did and it got 404s when it tried weekends and holidays, which is unfortunate, but just part of what this does. And all of the aggregate results are here in this CSV file. I can open it up and I can see the historical pricing now for the unadjusted prices. I can sort by the date column here to organize them a little bit more. And then all of the bad dates are down here at the bottom and I can delete these. So now I have the dates in a nice, easy to read format, as well as the actual closing prices back in time. I can see other things like pre-market and after hours. So I hope you found this useful and this video showed you what Polygon can do. Whether or not you use the Steve C data platform is a choice I'll leave to you, but I've shown you that Polygon is a really good service and they offer a very useful free tier that lets you get useful data out you can use to potentially build a back trading bot for up to two years in the past. Please like if you learn something, subscribe if you want to see more of this, and let me know in the comments if you have other APIs you want me to cover or any other similar use cases or domains so I can make future videos you can subscribe to. Thanks so much for watching, stay amazing, and stay data-driven.